This is, well, this is one of many layouts that I've built over the years. Uh, it's my first adventure into EM gauge. Uh, that bit, there was another Scottish layout I built some years ago in Double O, but uh, this is a, a lot more, what can we say, sophisticated in detail than that. Reason I built it? Uh, well, Scotland's my favourite place, other than the Black Country, of course, especially the West Coast. Uh, out on the coast and the islands, holiday there at least twice a year. So when all that had gone, I suppose the only other thing was to do was to model it. The model itself started uh, on one of the holidays, sitting outside a cottage on a sunny day, started sketching something down on paper of a possible model railway I'd like to build. Uh, that day we visited Talisker Distillery on Sky and there is a road with a whisky warehouse to the side with a white painted building and a little bridge out of the river. Took a photograph of it and that formed the first part of the layout. From then studied photographs, had a look and some rough measurements. They become the station building and the signal box. So all the buildings are from the west coast locality. The shipwreck under the bridge, that the inspiration came from one we found on the Isle of Lewis, it was lying there, rotted away and all that was left of it was part of the boiler. So that was a, another modelling point. Glen Ewing never had a, a railway. It's about, we say, seven miles south of Malay. If the original plan of the West Highland Railway extension would have been to go to a town called Rochford, which is slightly north of Glen Ewig, but with railway, model railway licence, I stretched that uh, and took it a few miles further down to Glen Ewig. Glen Ewig's a very small village, one served by road to the mid 70s, which is an excuse to say why the railway survived. Most of the supplies then coming in by boat. So, visited Glen Ewig, uh, had a look around. There is no distillery there, and there is no Grant's Kippers. I later found out there is a Kipper factory there called McDonald's. If I'd have known then it would have been modelled McDonald's Kippers, but there you go, hindsight. The track CNL, pre-timber track base, so it's the plastic sleepers with a chair stuck on. Drove me mad, but still, the effects are brilliant. The stocks are either ready to run or converted. Uh, the two small soles has been 26 and 27 being held here, re-wheeled with Backman coach wheels to exacting EM gauge standards of course. Most of the wagons are kit built, Cambrian, Parkside, I went for Spratwinkle couplings. They work 90% of the time, infuriating the rest of the time. It's always the biggest problem, but uh, there we go. From the start, I think I decided I was going to fit DCC and sound. Just adds just something to what would be just another small layout otherwise. The, the, sound, the sound was fitted from the start with the DCC. It's been very really successful.